Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through cholangiocarcinoma. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash cholangiocarcinoma or in the general surgery section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Cholangiocarcinoma is a type of cancer that originates in the bile ducts. The majority are adenocarcinomas. It may affect the bile ducts inside the liver, the intrahepatic ducts, or the bile ducts outside the liver, the extrahepatic ducts. The most common site is the perihyla region, which is where the right and the left hepatic duct have joined to become the common bile duct just after they leave the liver. The key risk factors for cholangiocarcinoma to remember are primary sclerosing cholangitis and liver flukes, which are a parasitic infection. A Tom tip for you, patients with ulcerative colitis are at risk of developing primary sclerosing cholangitis. Patients that have primary sclerosing cholangitis are at risk of developing cholangiocarcinoma, about 10 to 20%. When it comes to cholangiocarcinoma, primary sclerosing cholangitis is the key risk factor that's worth remembering for your exams. The other notable cause is parasitic infection with liver flukes, which are found in various parts of Southeast Asia and Europe. Let's talk about the presentation. Obstructive jaundice is the key presenting feature to remember. Obstructive jaundice is associated with pale stools, dark urine, and generalized itching. Other non-specific signs and symptoms of cholangiocarcinoma include unexplained weight loss, right upper quadrant pain, a palpable gallbladder, which is swollen due to an obstruction in the duct that's distal to the gallbladder, causing a back pressure of bile building up inside the gallbladder, and finally hepatomegaly. Courvoisier's law states that if there's a palpable gallbladder and the patient has jaundice, the diagnosis is unlikely to be gallstones. The cause is usually cholangiocarcinoma or pancreatic cancer. A Tom tip for you, painless jaundice should make you think of cholangiocarcinoma or cancer of the head of the pancreas. Pancreatic cancer is more common, so this is likely to be the answer in your exams. Let's talk about investigations. A diagnosis is based on imaging, for example a CT or MRI scan, plus histology from a biopsy of the lesion. A staging CT scan involves a full CT of the thorax, abdomen and pelvis, or CT tap. This is used to look for metastasis and other cancers. The tumour marker to remember for cholangiocarcinoma is CA19-9 and CA stands for carbohydrate antigen. And this is a tumour marker that may be raised in cholangiocarcinoma. It's also raised in pancreatic cancer and a number of other malignant and non-malignant conditions. So it's not very specific. If the patient has evidence of obstruction, for example painless jaundice, a magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography or MRCP imaging may be used to visualise the biliary system in detail and assess any obstruction. If there is obstruction in place, an endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography or ERCP procedure can be used to put a stent in and relieve the obstruction and it can also be used to obtain a biopsy from the tumour. 
Finally, let's talk about management. Management will be decided at a multidisciplinary team or MDT meeting. Curative surgery may be possible in early cases and it may be combined with radiotherapy and chemotherapy. However, in most cases, curative surgery is not possible. Palliative treatment may involve stents inserted to relieve any biliary obstruction, surgery to improve symptoms, for example, bypassing a biliary obstruction, palliative chemotherapy, palliative radiotherapy, and end-of-life care with symptom control. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel. There's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.